Smallpox is an infectious disease caused by the variola virus, which has been affecting humans for thousands of years. It is difficult to pinpoint the exact time when smallpox was first discovered, as the disease likely emerged and evolved over a long period. However, evidence of smallpox has been found in ancient texts and physical remains. The earliest potential evidence of smallpox comes from teeth found in Denmark that date back to around 300 AD. The teeth contain traces of the variola virus, suggesting that the disease existed in Europe during that time. Additionally, descriptions of a disease resembling smallpox can be found in ancient texts from China and India, dating as far back as 1500 BC. One of the earliest clear descriptions of smallpox comes from the 4th century AD, in the writings of the Roman scholar Celsus. Further accounts of smallpox outbreaks are documented throughout history, with the disease significantly impacting various populations across the world. In the 18th century, English physician Edward Jenner made a groundbreaking discovery that led to the development of the first smallpox vaccine. By observing that milkmaids who have been infected with cowpox, a related virus, appeared to be immune to smallpox, Jenner laid the foundation for modern vaccination. After decades of vaccination efforts, smallpox was officially declared eradicated in 1980 by the World Health Organization. Smallpox is a highly contagious disease caused by the variola virus. The infection route for smallpox is primarily through respiratory droplets, which are expelled when an infected person coughs, sneezes, or talks. The virus can then be inhaled by people in close proximity, leading to infection. Here are the main ways smallpox spreads. Respiratory droplets. Smallpox is most commonly transmitted through the inhalation of respiratory droplets containing the variola virus. When an infected person coughs or sneezes, they release droplets into the air, which can be inhaled by people nearby, entering their respiratory system and leading to infection. Close contact. Smallpox can also be transmitted through close personal contact with an infected person. This can include touching their body, clothing, or bedding, which may be contaminated with the virus. Contaminated objects. The variola virus can survive on surfaces and objects for a limited time. Touching contaminated objects, such as clothing, bedding, or utensils, and then touching the mouth, nose, or eyes can lead to infection. Rarely, airborne transmission. In rare cases, smallpox has been known to spread through the air in enclosed settings, such as buildings with poor ventilation. However, this mode of transmission is not as common as respiratory droplet transmission. Once the variola virus enters the body, it multiplies in the respiratory tract and spreads to the bloodstream, eventually leading to the characteristic rash and other symptoms associated with smallpox. The disease is most contagious during the first week of the rash when the skin lesions contain large amounts of the virus. Smallpox is caused by the variola virus and results in a range of symptoms that typically occur in stages. The incubation period for smallpox is about 12 to 14 days, during which the infected person is not contagious and shows no symptoms. After the incubation period, symptoms progress in the following stages. Initial or prodromal stage, 2 to 4 days. High fever. Severe headache. Fatigue and general malaise. Muscle aches and back pain. Vomiting and nausea. Early rash stage, approximately 4 days. A rash begins to appear usually starting on the face and then spreading to the arms, legs, and torso. The rash starts as small red spots, which develop into raised bumps or papules. The fever may temporarily decrease during this stage. Pustular rash stage, approximately 4 to 6 days. The papules become filled with fluid and develop into pustules. These pustules are firm, round, and tender to touch. The pustules typically form a pattern on the skin with the majority concentrated on the face and extremities. The fever may persist or increase during this stage. Pustules scab over, approximately 5 to 14 days. The pustules begin to form a crust and scab over. The scabs eventually dry up and fall off, leaving behind a scar. Recovery stage. As the scabs fall off, the person starts to recover from the illness. Complete recovery can take several weeks, depending on the severity of the infection and any complications that may have occurred. It is important to note that smallpox is a highly contagious disease, particularly during the rash stages. 
The virus can be transmitted through respiratory droplets, close personal contact, and contaminated objects. Vaccination and early detection are crucial for preventing the spread of the disease. Since smallpox was declared eradicated in 1980 by the World Health Organization, vaccination is no longer given as part of routine immunization programs. There is no specific antiviral treatment for smallpox, as the disease was eradicated in 1980 through a worldwide vaccination campaign led by the World Health Organization WHO. Since then, smallpox vaccinations have not been part of routine immunization programs. However, if an outbreak were to occur, the following measures would be taken. Vaccination. The smallpox vaccine, if administered within a few days after exposure to the virus, may prevent or significantly reduce the severity of the disease. The vaccine is made from a live virus called Vicinia, which is related to the smallpox virus but does not cause smallpox. The vaccine is not given routinely, as the risk of complications from the vaccine outweighs the risk of contracting smallpox, which is considered eradicated. Supportive care. Since there is no specific antiviral treatment for smallpox, the focus is on providing supportive care to alleviate symptoms and manage complications. This may include pain relief and fever reduction with over-the-counter medications like acetaminophen or ibuprofen, ensuring adequate hydration and nutrition, monitoring and treating any secondary bacterial infections that may arise from the skin lesions, antiviral medications. In case of a smallpox outbreak, the antiviral drug Ticovirimot TPOXX, has been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, for the treatment of smallpox. While it has not been tested in humans with smallpox, studies in animals and humans with a similar virus have shown that it may be effective in reducing the severity and duration of the disease. Isolation and containment. To prevent the spread of the virus, individuals with smallpox would be isolated, and strict infection control measures would be implemented. This includes the use of personal protective equipment PPE, such as masks, gowns, gloves, and goggles, as well as proper disposal of contaminated materials. Public health authorities would work to trace and vaccinate individuals who may have been exposed to the virus, as well as monitor and manage any potential outbreaks.